I was going to talk today about uh, is Britain sustainable, but events have rather overtaken that on Wednesday night with the uh, uh, with the brutal murder of Fusilier Lee Rigby, and as horrific as that was, I am more horrified by the reaction of the media and by the reaction of our government. David Cameron tells us this is a betrayal of Islam. Boris Johnson tells us Islam has nothing to do with this. When they butchered that soldier, they quoted verses from the Quran. They shouted Allahu Akbar as they were chopping the poor guy's head off. This was done in the name of Islam. And no matter what our treacherous politicians have got to say about this, this was done in the name of Islam. And everybody is in denial in this country. The BBC are trying to pretend this is because we're in Afghanistan, because we're in Iraq, because we are oppressing them worldwide. The Daily Telegraph, which is supposedly a right-wing newspaper, every single article they've had on this, they've switched off the comments because they know the comments are going to be hanging David Cameron out to dry. They will be telling him, don't lie to us. We know Islam was involved, and no matter what you're going to say about it, this has to be the truth because it is the truth. And they turned off all the comments. In The Spectator, they did exactly the same thing, another supposedly right-leaning periodical. And the reason that they've done this is because they have to admit that if there is a problem with Islam, then they have to do something about it. And if you want to do something about it, that automatically makes you a far-right, racist, xenophobic bigot and they don't want to be labelled that. So they would rather betray their entire country than be labelled a racist. And this whole racism thing has got to stop because we are no longer a country with a few immigrants that we have to be nice to. And at the time, back in the 50s and 60s, we were, but that is no longer the case. And when they talk and label us as racists, they're doing this because the left liberals have declared a racial and cultural war on the indigenous people of this country. It's what they're doing. Everything that they are doing right now is a, literally a racial and cultural war. And you look at someone like uh, Peter Sutherland, who's the UN uh, immigration, immigration Migration Officer, official. He has said that in order for the uh, European Union to actually achieve what it wants to do, which is political union of the entire continent of Europe, they have to de-homogenize the nation states. Now, what does he mean by de-homogenize? What he means is we can no longer be considered an indigenous people. We must open the doors to the third world. We must break down the nation states. And only when the nation state is broken down can they achieve full totalitarian control over any number of bickering communities, as they call us? Not the bickering, just the communities. Now, since Tony Blair came in 1997, we have had 8 million immigrants coming into Britain, principally into England, and we've had 2 million indigenous Brits move out. Now, that's a 10 million difference. This is an astonishing figure. It's never happened before in the history of this country, in the history of any countries, really. And the result is that our cities are now becoming minority white. But even that is a slight lie, because they're not minority white across the whole spectrum. If you get down to the, to the uh, 10 to 20-year-olds, we are a huge minority already. If you go into schools in London, you, uh, very rarely do you see white children these days. And the, the 2011 census is now saying that we are officially in our cities minorities. This is it's just an extraordinary thing. And 10% of the children in this country now are Muslim. And Muslim, Islam is growing nine times faster than any other demographic in this country. It, it, it's a huge growth. And people, 
get very confused about the fact that when they say they're only 10%, 10% of the children are Muslim, and they say, well, that's fine, it's only 10%, you're still 90%. Well, we're not 90%, we're probably 75, 80%, because the other ones, uh, other immigrants are not necessarily Muslim, but they are, they're not us. But we only have between 1 to 1.3 children each. The Muslims are having four children each. If 10% of the population have four children, that 10% becomes 40%. If 80% of the population has only 1 to 1.5 child, they get down to 55, 50, 40% very quickly within one generation. We are going to be looking at comparable numbers of people aged 20 to 30. And that's a big problem because that age group are capable of inflicting violence. It doesn't matter how many more of us there are over the age of 50 or 60, we don't count. It's the young ones that count, and the young ones in our future are not going to be us. And we were never asked about this. Back in the 1950s, when immigration first started coming in, in not particularly huge numbers, just in the thousands, and people were complaining then, and we were told, look, the numbers are very small. It doesn't matter. The numbers are so small, it will have no impact on your lives. And then the numbers got bigger. And we were then told, look, all right, the numbers are bigger, but they're going to integrate, so you have nothing to worry about. And then the numbers became huge. And they said, well, all right, they're not going to integrate, there's too many of them. We'll introduce this new ideology, we'll call it multiculturalism, and uh, they can have their separate lives and you can have your separate lives, and we'll all get on very well together. And now the numbers are so huge, we are now being told that we must celebrate this. We must celebrate this diversity, this racial and cultural diversity. Douglas Murray, a few months ago, came up with a fantastic uh, example of this. He said, at what point in diversity can we stop celebrating it? When we become 60% of the population, maybe we should still be celebrating our cultural and racial diversity. But when we become 40%, are we supposed to celebrate that? When we become 10%, are we really expected to celebrate that? And of course the answer is no, we should not, and we were never asked. And now, finally, if you don't celebrate the left liberal version of multicultural racial utopia, they will come round if you complain about it, and they will lock you up for inciting racial and religious hatred. They also tell us, of course, that we benefit economically and culturally from opening the doors to the third world. You know, back in 2004, Channel 4 were going to bring out a, a TV documentary about the, I'm not going to call it grooming because it's not grooming, it is, it is and it's not paedophilia as such, it is sexual slavery and it's based on racial superiority, it's a racial crime. And they were going to bring out this, uh, this, this documentary in 2004, the police in Bradford, which is where it was happening, said if you bring that out, the place is going to go up in flames because they'd recently had riots in Bradford. If you bring this out now, Bradford will erupt. Now, this apparently is a result of our communities living in harmonious peace together, which of course we don't. It's an absolute lie. The tensions in Bradford back then were huge. The tensions in Bradford are huge now, but it's not just Bradford, it's Birmingham, it's Luton, it's Leicester, it's London, it's Manchester, it is all across the country. And what do they bring with them? I'd like to know. I like curry. I really like curry, but apart from curry, I don't see anything that they've brought with them. They've brought murder, rape, mugging, huge amounts of crime, and also the numbers are, you know, from a cultural point of view, they've bought nothing. Economically, economically, they tell us that they are, without them we would be an economic failure. But, but th again, this is an absolute lie. We are now told we need to build five million new houses between now and 2020. Now, in the old days, when you built five million houses, people bought them. 
But that's not the case anymore. The state is now taking your taxpayer money to build five million houses to, to house people that don't have any money of their own to live in. And we're also told we need to have 800,000 new places at schools. We don't have these places, we don't even have the physical schools. We have to build these. Apparently this is going to cost a hundred billion pounds. That's a hundred thousand million pounds by 2020. We're bankrupt as it is. We don't have any money. The NHS system which is the National Health Service, is no longer the National Health Service. It is the International Health Service. It is failing, and it's failing because we have opened the doors to people with no money who are coming in here and abusing what should have been a fantastic left-wing socialist ideal, looking after the poor and looking after the oppressed of your own country. And they have destroyed that completely by opening the doors to the third world. Our prisons are full. It costs a huge amount of money to put these people in prison. We don't have enough prisons. We've got to build more prisons, even though it's very hard to send anybody to a prison. It is all just astonishing. 1997, before Tony Blair's treacherous government opened the doors to the third world, our welfare bill was 56 billion pounds. Last year it was 110 billion. Now why has that figure doubled over that period? If these people coming in are an economic uh, a bonus for us, why are we paying 110 billion pounds a year now compared to 56 billion pounds a few years ago? We don't benefit economically, we are paying to colonise with the third world our country and we do not benefit culturally. We have, as I've just described, everything that goes on. Do we have the moral and legal right to survive as a race and a culture in our own country? We're told by the left liberals again that we're a mongrel race. There's no such thing as the indigenous English. There's no such thing as the indigenous British. You're a mongrel race. You were, you were formed by immigration. Now, to a certain extent, that's true. We, you know, we've got Roman and Celtic and Viking and Anglo-Saxon and Norman. But most of those physically invaded us and beat us. We wouldn't be that hodgepodge if we had repelled them at the beaches. They invaded us, and as a result, we, be we became who we are today. But from the 12th century until World War II, the English, and I'm going to have to talk specifically about the English now, the English became the indigenous race between the 12th century and World War II, and that is who we were. When we see those pictures of our soldiers going off and fighting, that is who we were. That it was our country, it was our race, it was our people. And we had been formed by centuries of the sameness, of the same culture, of Christianity, of altruism. All of these things made us what we were. We were typical. That was indigenous. Tony Blair told us that we could not, under UN guidelines refer to ourselves as, in, as an indigenous people. And the reason he did that was because if we were allowed to say we were indigenous, what he was doing would have been illegal under the UN uh, uh, treaties. I have to read this bit out to you. The UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People states every indigenous individual has a right to a nationality. Indigenous peoples and individuals have the right not to be subjected to forced assimilation or destruction of their culture. Multiculturalism is destroying our culture. Multiculturalism tells third world people that they have a history, a heritage, a tradition that they should be proud of. They tell us that our entire past is colonialism, oppression, slavery, murder, warfare. We are not allowed to have our own culture. According to the UN, we are. And that is why traitor Tony Blair said you cannot be labelled as, as an indigenous people. And I don't know if anybody saw my little uh, argument with uh, Sonia Gable, a communist who uh, runs Searchlight magazine. And she 
when she heard this new party, Liberty GB, had started, she said, another fascist right-wing party. So I went onto her site and I asked her, what exactly is fascist about us? And she said, you're against immigration, you're against this, you're against that. And I asked her a simple question. I said, do we have a moral and legal right as English to exist in our own homeland? This argument went on for a while, but if, basically she said, no, you don't. Your past is evil. You deserve everything that you now get as a result of what your ancestors did a long, long time ago. Now, this is a really wicked thing to do. And when you look at the numbers involved and the fact that we are going to become a minority in our own country before 2050, well before 2050 for, uh, for the younger people, that I term to be genocide. And I'm backed up again by the United Nations definition on genocide, which quite specifically says, in the present convention, genocide means any of the acts committed with intent to destroy, in whole or in part, a national, ethical, racial or religious group, and deliberately inflicting on that group conditions of life calculated to bring about its physical destruction, in whole or in part. Now, go to any city centre, which is inundated with the third world, you will not see any white people in Tower Hamlets. You won't see white people in all parts of Luton, parts of Leicester, all across the country, because they have been driven out. They have lost their right to exist as a culture and a race in their own country. This is what's happened in a, an incredibly short period of time. And it started from a small base. Now, that small base of people, when they double when their demographic doubles from 100,000 to 200,000, it doesn't really matter. But when you get to the point now where we've got 4 million Muslims in this country, they are going to become 8 million within the next decade, and then 16 million, and then 32 million. And we, meanwhile, are dwindling as a race. Our government is against us, our media is against us, we are losing a racial war, we are losing a cultural war, and we are, we've lost essentially, today, because we're standing up now trying to, trying to do something about it, but we are not helped by our own people who are running our government and running our country and running our education and running our media and running our councils. They are intent on seeing us reduced to a small, servile race of people. To Why, why they want to do this, I simply don't know. Some of them are evil, some of them are naive and stupid and don't understand, but combined with the evil and with the naivety, we are in serious, serious trouble, and our children and our grandchildren are going to be utterly confused by how did you allow this to happen and what sort of people were you to sit back and allow this to happen under your noses because you were frightened of being called a racist really one word one word has made you sit back and do nothing while your country was ripped from underneath your feet you have got to be joking but we're not joking we are trying to do something about it, but our government, the European Union, the United Nations, they are intent on ripping our country and our culture out from under our feet. And it is so important that we are not allow, allowing ourselves to be called a racist if we stand up and say, I want to protect my country, I want to protect my culture, I want to protect my race, you are the racist because what you are doing is the probably the most evil act of criminal racism carried out in the history of mankind. You have deliberately reduced an indigenous people to servitude. They are the racists. The left liberals are the racists. We are decent, proud patriots and we should be very proud of ourselves and we've got to keep fighting this until we win. Thank you very much. <laughs>